Cheers Vinyl Community, what's going on? It's LJ, and yes, I lived through the last video. Uh, so this video, not a vinyl update, but just a quick uh, run through. It's a uh, vinyl collection request for Rush, and I received uh, two different PMs from uh, Keith Guitarist 101 and um, Mega Hockey 8, I believe those are your usernames. Uh, what we're listening to in the background, this is uh, actually a recent find. This is a great album. It's really just blown my mind. It's uh, opened by a band called Blues Image, uh, 1970. Absolutely fantastic album. One to seek out. Take a look. Um, you know, if, if you happen across it, don't hesitate to pick it up. Great, great stuff. Rush. Okay, so, right. Where to start? First of all, I have spent the bulk of 2012 upgrading all of my Rush albums. Uh, I've had all of them for a number of years, and they've just been listened to and infinitely listened to, some of them since high school. But getting into the uh, the gear of Clockwork Angels in the beginning of the year, I started listening to them more than, more than I normally would to kind of gear up for that. And I'm noticing how badly some of them needed to be replaced. So throughout the course of the year and up until now, I've managed to upgrade every single copy, with the exception of 2112, which I have three copies of. That's the last one that I'm really just looking for that stone mint copy um, to, to call the final one. I also wanted to mention of note that if you really want to get into kind of a, a rush album by album, not review, but what did the band think of the albums, I can't highly recommend enough Martin Popoff's book, anything Popoff has written for that matter, but uh, Contents Under Pressure, 30 Years of Rush at Home and Away. And in this book, Popoff um, sits down with the band and he goes through, every, he, they, go through every album. What was it like writing it? What was it like recording it? What was it like touring for it? What do you remember about it? Uh, and I mean, just every single album. It's a great read, it's a quick read, it's well written, it's got feedback from the band all over it. Period pictures from every album. I mean, there's a pretty young Neil. And it just goes on to dispel I mean, a tremendous amount of misconceptions and fan myth and folklore about Rush. It, and at 20 bucks, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. Right, so on to the Rush. We begin with Rush, <laughs> aptly titled. This is Rush's first album. This is, uh, there's a number of early, early pressings of this that would be killer to own. This is, um, it should be said that all these at this point, save 2112, are near mint. Uh, this is their first album, John Rutzi on drums, a uh, very different sounding Rush. Okay, there's a bit of a review. A great album, just a, a blues, bar, stomping, rocking, freaking album. It'll just, it'll blow your speakers. It's, it's absolutely awesome. Fantastic album, 1974, uh, late 80s pressing. Um, here is Fly By Night. I have three or four copies of this. Here's two of them. Um, this one being a late 80s pressing. Definitely, probably my favorite early Rush album. Song for song, I love Fly By Night. Um, and this is an early or original pressing on um, the early label for uh, Mercury with the buildings in the background. Absolutely love that label. And I really should go these and see uh, what they're stamped. See this one, you'll never see the Dead Wax, but it's stamped Master Disc in uh, the Dead Wax. And some great Dead Wax information with Rush, you know, with the different pressings in the Master Disc and so forth. And I really need to go through them all and see what is, uh, what's stamped what. Anyways, Fly By Night, definitely a favorite. Uh, Neil's introduction into the band, here, Pert, depending on where you're from and what you care about or listen to, I always say Neil Pert. Uh, but Fly By Night, absolutely essential. Awesome album. Here is Caress of Steel, a fantastic album. Definitely not my favorite Rush album. Um, it may be the single one I listen to the least, but it's still essential and I love it. Fortunately, it's one that when you can find, it's usually not too expensive. Here's one of three 2112s, the album that is damn near impossible to find without ringwear. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and this is kind of the one that I'm just, you know, sitting waiting for that mint one to pop. And when it does, we're off and running. 2112 is a great album. Uh, it's a very early pressing. Uh, I'm not sure if this is original or not. I haven't looked up the uh, Dead Wax numbers. This one's not bad. I mean, if you're in eBay land, it's like a VG Plus. You know what I mean? But it's one of those that the sleeve isn't. And it, it's time to bring, you know, a really, really solid, nice copy home. Uh, my opinion of 2112 right quick, awesome, but overrated. Not their best and often referred to as. Still a rock solid album. 
And now, which side of the live rush fence do you fall on? See, there tends to be two different sides. I can tell you for a fact that my brother from Anata Mutta, uh, Lazarus, Dwayne, happens to think that All the World's a Stage is the definitive live rush album. Okay, I respect Dwayne's opinion, and I think All the World's a Stage is a fantastic album. Two things. This is one where I think it definitely separates what did you rock out to in the Camaro when you were in high school. It's a few years separating Dwayne and I, and I have my suspicions that his uh, teenage years may take him back to All the World's a Stage, whereas mine take me back to Exit Stage Left. Both awesome albums, and anytime Dwayne wants to sit down and listen to them both back to back over a couple of beers, I'm right there. All right, let's keep it going. Here is a farewell to Kings. Another stellar, stellar, stellar Rush album. Closer to the Heart comes from A Farewell to Kings. Absolutely awesome album. I guess if they're gatefolds, I might as well show them to you. And I always loved the uh, cover artwork. Killer stuff. This one is a gatefold. Definitely not to be missed. Da, 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 da. Here is Hemispheres. Again, great stuff. Great, great, great stuff. The trees um, comes from hemispheres. This is kind of Rush heading out of that, um, you know, the, the stories and the epic songs and preludes and part ones and part twos and part threes. This was released on red vinyl as well. I don't own that. I've seen it out there though. Very cool custom labels. Lots of Rush LPs with custom labels. Um, and, and the book, Contents Under Pressure, Really goes into great detail to have Rush say, you know, generally we start with an idea and, you know, like 2112 being the start of the concept thing and then we'd really start to nail it on the second and then by the time we hit the third we've perfected that particular trilogy and we're freaking done with it and we want to move on. And we do, to straight ahead rock, like Permanent Waves. Permanent Waves, an absolutely awesome album, was for a long time my favorite Rush album. Love It to Death, Spirit of Radio, Free Will, uh, Different Strings, Jacob's Ladder. There's not a damn thing wrong with this album, and it'll make a system sing. Uh, it probably go. It should be said, my brothers, who are both uh, four or five years older than me, so I grew up on a lot of their record collection, really hung out in that Hemisphere's Farewell to Kings 2112 type rush, so that's really where I got immersed in Rush there. And then for myself, in late elementary, early middle school, is kind of where I caught on to things that they had just picked up, like um, moving pictures, um, permanent waves, and signals, and things along those lines. So moving on, here is moving pictures, an absolute epic in its own right. So much information about this album online, and I this carries my favorite Rush track, which I will go on record as saying is Red Barchetta, my favorite Rush song of all time. Here is my favorite live album by Rush. This is Exit Stage Left. Lots of cool throwbacks here. I mean, you have the Owl from Fly By Night. There's your guy from uh, Farewell to Kings. Here's your folks from Moving Pictures, Hemispheres, and so on. So Rush, I mean, Rush just always puts together such a package. Really treats the fans right. Uh, always does it right every time. Really puts, they're a band that just has never stopped putting their heart and soul into everything they release. Here is Signals, which I will say to this day is still my favorite Rush album. Song for song, I, starting with Subdivisions, which I can't not sing out loud, and culminating in Countdown, man, Subdivisions is, is a great song, and Signals is where it's at. Great album. Um, kind of a bit of a black sheep, Grace Under Pressure. A lot of folks don't seem to like Rush's synth period. Again, it might fall on, where did you grow up? So. If Signal started it, it definitely continues on Grace Under Pressure, which I don't not like at all. Uh, Red Sector A and Distant Early Warning, these are great songs and it's a great album. And kind of culminating on Power Windows. And Getty would go on to say in uh, the book that these songs got so complicated to perform live that if the guy hit the wrong key or stepped on a wrong pedal to release the, the right sound effect at the wrong time, the entire song was shot. I mean, the complexity of performing these live almost killed the man. Oh, Manhattan Project, I just caught the title. Awesome, great album. <clears throat> Hold Your Fire, another top contender for a favorite Rush album. A total 10 all day long. I absolutely love, 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 love Hold Your Fire. Another one that's not to be missed. It's just great stuff. Time Stand Still, I know it's overplayed, but man, it's such a good song. 
here is A Show of Hands, uh, another live album from that later 80s period of Rush. Killer live version of Subdivisions here. Killer album. Absolutely great stuff. Great, great, great stuff. I wonder how many times I've said that so far. Here is Presto. Presto is another fantastic album. Presto really takes a huge bitch slap in the face, um, you know, by all means. But Presto kind of, it cut you into here we come into the 90s. And what would come after that, coming off the synth period, again, with Rush working in uh, trilogies of albums, or so it seems, and Getty alludes to in the book, Presto would kickstart what would be a whole new sound for Rush. And Presto is an awesome album. The last one I have on vinyl is definitely one of, if not the pickup of 2012, and that is Clockwork Angels. Clockwork Angels, I cannot say enough good things about. Fucking amazing. Anybody that's questioning whether or not you pick up Clockwork Angels, the answer is yes, by all means. Very big throwback to just, I don't even want to say early Rush, but it's just rock and Rush. I mean, they are rock and gone or synths, gone or all that shit, just killer 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 songs killer sound clockwork angel very definitely one of the pickups of 2012 so um guys vinyl community at large anybody watching mega hockey 8 keep guitarist 101 you wanted it you got it there's the rush vinyl collection and some of my thoughts about each one of them hope you guys enjoyed and everyone feel free to leave a comment if you have one hope everyone's doing well and talk to you soon